Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a little polar bear. It's going to be super fun. Uh, we're going to do black and white, so it'll be a good lesson in value study. Got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Frederick's Mixed Media Board. Uh, this is a new one for me. I haven't used these yet. They're new for uh, a new product from Frederick's, so I'm excited to try them out today. Um, I've coated it with a carbon black, just plain old black. It doesn't have to be carbon black. I get that question a lot. Mars black's fine. Um, that's another common black color, really. Whatever black you've got will work as long as it's dark enough um, for it to uh, mix well, but yeah, okay. Um, let's go our brushes. I've got a number eight bright from Princeton. This is the Aspen series in the dark handles. This one will have a little bit extra texture, so we'll use that um, mainly to just to block in some of the larger colors. And then I've got a three eighths inch um, Deerfoot stippler blender and then a quarter inch blender as well. And then I also grabbed a three eighths inch filbert granier. One of these um, or all of these will be using for the fur texture. So you just need a brush that's gonna have a little bit of either like a separation, like the uh, filbert granier is like a comb or a rake, sometimes it's called. Um, it's got separation between the bristles at the tip and these ones will kind of do the same thing a fan brush probably could work too um the deerfoot stippler could work for that as well so we'll use one or all of those for most of the fur and then i've also got a quarter inch three eighths inch angle and a number one round for some of the smaller details um, and that's all we're going to need uh, besides a palette knife um, and a few paints so two paints it was pretty easy i usually like takes me about five minutes to put my paints out this morning mark looked over he's like have you put your paints out and i'm like um yeah i did <laughs> it took me like two seconds <laughs> black and white <laughs> and um i was going to do <clears throat> if you wanted to get a little fancier with it you could use like burnt umber and um, ultramarine blue to make a gray and um, use kind of bl blue and um, brown tones on this as well i decided to just go with the cool grays um and uh stick with that today and i'm going to show you kind of how to do um mix up uh, kind of a a um line of different valued whites we're probably not going to do all of these but um, something like this in our grays so that we um, can move quickly when we paint our little guy so carbon black titanium white and this is glazing medium we're definitely going to want the glazing medium because that's going to really give us that polish uh, at the very end we'll glaze with um, some black so if you want to know about glazing uh, stick around to the end so all right Oh, was that all? Thank you to Fredericks and Princeton, our brush sponsors and uh, camera yes. sponsor. They're awesome. They send us all these um, nice stuff. I've got some new brushes coming, so I'm really excited to try out. Princeton's got a ton of different lines of brushes, and uh, I've only tried probably five or six of them, so I'm kind of slowly like just trying different ones to see which ones I like the best. I still like uh, the Velvet Touch and Select. Uh, these ones in the green handles the blue ones and the red ones those are my favorites so far <laughs> so, <laughs> and the aspen does well uh yeah i really like the aspen that's a new one that i added this year and they are the the firmer bristles really um do well for stuff like this where you want to cover um a lot of area um quickly and they're really good so especially for like impressionist type paintings um like what did we do recently um the poinsettia we did that was kind of that style all right uh yes do we do it with the christmas tree too i can't remember all right so i'm going to start out with my white i probably don't have enough out here so what i'm going to do is just put kind of a a couple of dabs of white down here and And then I'm just gonna start with a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of black on here. Not gonna need a whole lot. And we'll start with this first one here. I 
with my palette knife. The palette knife just keeps your brushes clean, um, makes it easier to mix up large, large bits of paint. Trying to keep it kind of all together. I really need to start with my dark, actually. I don't know why I started on this end. Amateur. I was, I was thinking waiting for you to say that. I was thinking over here, like, what in the world is she doing? Okay, well, that'll that'll give me some, a little bit of white, and really that's probably all I'm going to need. So I'm going to grab um, most of this black here. Over here, I'm going to take it way over here, and I'm just going to use what white's in my brush to... You might zoom out just... Zoom. Not brush, but... You might zoom out a little bit on your palette cam, because it's really... Oh, my palette edge. cam has, has been nudged. That's what happened when it got okay. turned on. Somebody helped me turn it on today and oh sure i think it was it to the side no i think it was when it was turned off from uh -uh. the last show uh -uh. yeah i think so <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't know who, who would have done that who would have done that uh -huh. yeah. hey i appreciate the help i try <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave a pretty good amount of that. Um, right like that. I'm going to scoop up this, bring it over here, and grab some of this white out of this. Uh, maybe not that much, but you know, a little bit more than what we had before. This has already got a little bit of white in it, so just wanting to create another gray here. That is just a little bit lighter and that's probably not quite light enough so I'm gonna grab a little bit more there we go okay so there we go that gray and then I'm gonna scoop up a good amount of it and then I'm just gonna add it to this white that we've got here Basically, each time we do it, we're just going to add a little bit more white. And, you know, you can do it different ways, but it seems to do okay. And I'm not worried about it being perfectly smoothly blended because we're going to be using this for the fur and things. So it's not going to have to be like exact. If we were doing it for the background or something, I would probably want to make sure that I was in it super you know smooth blend but um i'm good with this so just taking a little bit of that adding it to this white here you can see how we're getting lighter each time we add a little bit more white Smush that paint off of there so they really get a good amount of it. And then just kind of twist your knife in one place and press down to kind of offload that paint. And then you can kind of stab through it um, to kind of mix through the middle there, back and forth. And then again, kind of scoop it from the sides go from the top or bottom whatever the paint kind of tends to spread out as you mix it so basically you're just wanting to kind of end up with a small little area here each time I do these mixes because this area down here that's really thin is going to dry out really quickly and so I need to make sure that I have at least a good amount in the middle here that is going to be thick all right so this time I'm going to take maybe a little bit less of this like right in there somewhere and use that up this one and then we've got this one on the end here that has already got a little bit of gray I think we did pretty good um, to get a pretty decent flow here so basically like all three of these were about the same amount of white you know like a little dollop of white and then this one was another little dollop of white that we pretty much like almost broken half to make this one and this one. 
So, and then we started with the full black here. Um, so that's kind of how it ended up being. So full dollop, full dollop, full dollop, half, half, and then the black there. And then that black was just a little bit of this one that had just a tiny bit of black in it mixed up first. So it seemed to work out pretty decent. Okay. I probably could have another one like in between these two, but I'll probably just mix it as I go. Um, so that looks good there. How you doing, hun? I am A-OK. -okay. Good. You had a helper with your wood pile this morning outside? Oh, yes, I did. Um, yeah, he, he did a great job. Fitz Pickle? Yes, puppy. yes. <laughs> uh, I am saved from my gloves. Oh, so, yeah, he saved you. Yes, he made sure that he attacked them. Yep, yep. Okay, nice. To make sure everything was okay. <laughs> and then he just ran around in circles. <laughs> like a crack, crackhead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Good to And he attacked the hose when I was trying to roll it up. <laughs> so there's that. He's defending you, hey? Right? Well, yeah, yeah. He's just helping keep the yard safe. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like this. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and, now that I'm looking at this, go ahead and get a little bit of this down here and just get a good amount of white and do another one that's in between these two because I think that's going to be a color that I'll probably need quite a bit of okay so there we go so this one would fit right in between these two here on our gray scale but then once you get this mix the then the then the uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more white to the then the trick is to keep it moist <laughs> while you're working because you don't want to do all this work and then have it dry out on you. So mix up enough that, you know, you'll be able to do it. This one actually, I think on the difficulty level, I think this one is going to be close to like the owls that we did. I really think that this one is going to be a really nice one for um, beginner painters. I really don't foresee it being difficult at all. Oops, I got a little bit of paint went through my thing there. All right. Um, oh, I didn't mention, too, you're going to want some sort of a chalk pencil. Um, this is a chalk, charcoal pencil that's white or um, a white um, water-soluble pencil or, or water color pencil. Um, white chalk will work fine, too, just to do your drawing or you can uh, draw it on paper and then transfer it on. So let me show you how to draw this guy. He's very easy. Um, Before you do that, can you tell us what color your nails are? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, jeez. Angela, really? It's over there. Every you can look it up. Every show I get this question. I know. I'm sorry. I don't remember. <sighs> it's something, you know. It's you know something, they... something black? Mm -mm, I think it was like. I can't remember. I honestly can't I'll, remember. I'll go look. It's over. I have a little color chart in there. All right. So, yeah, I made a color chart. Um, so we're. F this is actually the same size as our canvas, which is nice. It's a nine by twelve inch um, board here. These are the Strathmore mixed media journals that I like to use. They, and you can paint in them, so um, but they they're great for sketching too. Um, it's really kind of almost a waste to sketch in them because they're nice, so thick and nice. Um, so our little guy is gonna fit like right in the lower third of this section right here. So the top of him is going to be right in here somewhere on the third, and then the his chin is kind of right on the bottom third ish somewhere in there and he's pretty much centered um then he yeah the mama paws are um angled in from the side so they're kind of like this 
angled in a little bit here and here just so just a little bit in from the the top edge if you're using the same size canvas as I am um, and then once you get to about um, right about the chin level or below just below it then that's where those paws come out and around and this one kind of comes out this way and down and then you got these big old toes with these claws coming out which I absolutely love this photo this is it doesn't happen all that often but every now and then there's just like a photo that you see it and I'm like yep that's the one I gotta paint you know because I'm always on the lookout for new images to paint and okay that's those are too close together so the baby's face is going to be in the middle third this way so um, the width of it is about right in the third here this way so we can kind of mark that a little bit and then um, right up from the top here it comes down a little bit there's kind of an oval shape so if you kind of know your outside borders a little bit you can kind of use that and just draw kind of this oval shape and then flatten out where those paws are going to be. There's one here and one down here. And then it's kind of split the difference and that's his leg right there. And we've already marked kind of where the chin is going to be. So I'm coming just underneath that chin or that, that mark there. That was the lower third for the nose. And then the face is like a large triangle that cuts across this top of this oval right here just a little bit and again we're kind of fitting it in this little middle third here so if you just come down just a little bit and then kind of start the ear out this way the ears come out like that angle in and then almost straight down there's a little bit of a cheek here and then right around the face, there's a little bit of a narrowing right here around the face. The, um, but it really is kind of almost a straight triangle shape. And if you want to, you can split it down the middle to make sure that you're getting your face symmetrical, you know, as far as the eyes and everything. Your eyes are going to be, if you split this triangle in half right here, the eyes are going to be just underneath that and they're going to um, be uh, separated by the width of the nose so whatever the width of the nose is that's where the eyes are going to come out there and there and I'm going to angle up this way do a little teardrop shape right here angle around and up so there's like a large eyeball right here and here Somewhere in there like that. I probably made this one a little bit bigger than it need to be. Kind of straight line, round it out. Kind of straight line down here a little bit and then round it out again and kind of bring it down to that little point right there. So there and there. Then his little nose is kind of a oh, rounded, it's like a like a flattened out heart shape. Little rounded guy there. I probably could bring his nose up a little bit. I might do that. I might bring it up just slightly because I think that would be cuter. Again, the nose is going to kind of fit in between these two eyes here. I probably could bring this eye. I'm just going to darken those in because they're dark. And it looks creepy when they're white like that.
nice. Okay, then like right in between here, there's some little fur that comes up like this. And on the ears, there's a little, I'm gonna round those ears out a little bit more. There's like fur that kind of comes out around the front of the ear or the front of the ears to kind of shape that side of the face there, here and here. And then a little muzzle. So I'm gonna shorten that muzzle a little bit too. Bring in his cheek a little bit. From here and here. Look at how cute they are. They're so cute. Can't stand it. And then really pretty much from where that ear meets the head there, the body comes out. And then the leg kind of comes in here. He's so fluffy. And a little paws, and he's got his little claws coming out. This claw, this paws kind of pressing up against the mama claw. And then, yeah, I didn't bring this one out nearly far enough. There, somewhere in there. baby paw is a little bit smaller and it's in the shadow here and then you're seeing a little bit of the separation right there on the leg and then you're seeing this fur coming down here um, the nose again is kind of this heart shape it's got a little bit but I mean this is so black you really can't see the nostrils at all in our reference photo so I mean if you want to you can look up you know pictures of polar bear noses but um, baby noses, but uh, I think we're probably going to keep it pretty dark there, so it's not going to matter a whole lot. This side is a little bit closer to the body right here. I'm going to keep this one a little bit straight. And there's a little polar bear baby. Um, again, our paws, claws, mama claws are kind of coming in like this. There's uh, five, yeah, like a normal first five, no special, no extra claws, no extra toes. <laughs> I wonder if there's any animal out there with more than five. I, I don't know. I, f I feel like there is, but maybe not. I mean, for sure know. less, but yeah, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not more than five, but. Okay, so there's our basic drawing. Let me well, let's, move in here let's stop the show and gotta, research that real quick. No, it's all right. Let me get going here. Oh, I forgot to spray my paint. Oh, no. Yeah, you were over there just drawn away. Uh, this didn't dry while I was waiting here. I got a little bit of the chalk on here, so I'm just going to get that black and make sure um, if you're starting with the black canvas that's fine but just kind of know that you may need to um, you may need to um, paint it with the black because um, this uh, these outside edges we're going to be glazing so when you get the glaze on top of your black gesso it's going to show so um, you might as well just paint it black all right, so I'm gonna kind of use this and just leave that black canvas here as my background. And I'm just gonna kind of darken up a little bit of this fur on the mama bear between the baby, just above the baby here. And I'll just leave a little, I'm using kind of the darkest values here of my mix. And you can see how even though um, it's super dark when you get it on top of this. Um, any little bit of white really does show up. So it's pretty cool how that works. So I'm just gonna go right in here, some of these areas, and kind of just draw in our fur that separates out her legs right along those edges. And kind of using this time to sort of draw in the direction of the fur. So it's kind of going this way. In the middle, it's kind of coming towards the middle a little bit. 
And then real close to the baby here, it's pretty dark, so I'm gonna keep it dark down in here. And on the outside too, it's pretty dark. It's not as shaggy as I'm making it there, so I'm gonna kinda clean that up. The outside of the leg is not got a ton of that shaggy fur. It's kind of more in the middle here. Okay, and this side is getting some light. So I'm going to go with a little bit lighter, maybe this middle gray here. And use that on here. And just kind of using the texture of this brush, you can see, just by kind of lightly brushing it, I'm getting kind of that fur texture because it's breaking up as I'm painting it. I really like this smooth texture of this canvas. This is really nice. Um, if you're using a super textured canvas, you might have to add a little bit extra water to your paint to get it to go on smoothly. So, But this, this canvas has got a really nice smooth texture. It's actually made for um, mixed media, so you can use watercolors on it as well, and you can just wet down the surface so I think it's got a like a really absorbent surface so you can um, wet it down and let it set for about 10 minutes it says and then paint watercolors on it like watercolor paper so I haven't tried that yet but I probably will all right so getting some of the little bit brighter white as we approach the feet here they get a little bit lighter there's still some dark areas, so I'm not covering it completely. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of the dark. So right here where I'm transitioning, I'm going to get that black, the darker color again, and come up and just kind of go over that wet paint, and they'll kind of blend a little bit, and then fill in there. And I'm really kind of leaving this area right on either side of his body pretty, um, dark so I don't want to go right up to his body because the baby polar bear is going to be our light area so the mama's legs get really dark right in there <clears throat> okay so I'm just gonna basically I'm just kind of going over all my drawing lines here and just kind of marking out my borders of my areas here. You can use a smaller brush if this one's starting to get a little bit tight in these areas here, but I just mainly want to get rid of my white lines here. Oh, on the outside of my... bear. And when you, if you do trace it on um, from a drawing or a traceable, which I will have available for this after the show, probably later on today. I, I didn't make it at a time. Um, it'll be available on Patreon. So I have traceables for basically everything we've painted since 2017 on Patreon. <coughs> Several hundred paintings and traceables available for $2 a month. So In the current 2020 prices. Right, right. Long, long time ago, they were a dollar. Right. Now they're two. Yeah, and the thing is, when we, you know, when we change our prices, we don't, we don't make people upgrade to the new price. We like so everybody that started out as a dollar, we kept them as a dollar. You know, so as long as their account didn't lapse. Exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah, it was a uh, three over three years before you increased your price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only did it like last year, I think. It wasn't this year. Oh, okay. It was, I, it was, I don't keep track. I don't think it was this year. Maybe it was. I don't think it was. Maybe at the beginning of the year. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it could be, I guess. The Rona hadn't hit us yet, so. <laughs> All right, so kind of middle gray here. Again, these out, outer toes are kind of lighter, get a little bit more light. And really you could do the whole thing with this brush if you wanted to, or the, at least the, the mama fur with the brush. You can see it's doing a pretty decent job of it. Okay. 
It'll be just a different look. I'm kind of highlighting on the top edges of these, leaving a little bit of black in between where the claw is. now. And let's go ahead and try the 3 8 inch blender here and see how it does. So for the baby bear I'm going to kind of go with this sort of light, light gray, kind of medium light gray. We'll start with that around, oh cute. That works. So I'm just going to start stacking my fur here and leaving a little bit of that black showing through in places, but using that stiff bristle to create my little fur-like hairs. So if you notice what I'm doing is I'm going, um, I'm going across here and then I'm covering the, I'm not doing like a straight line, um, really solid all the way down. So, uh, you can get into, uh, you know, a habit of like when you're getting going here, you can, you can end up pressing down a little bit too hard. I'm going to do it on the palette so you can see what I'm saying. Um, and pressing down a little bit too hard and ending up with this solid line right here that's really hard to blend back over because then when you do your next line you're going to still see that line there. So what we're trying to do is use a light touch. We can do several of these but if I use a lighter touch when I do my line you see how much easier it's going to be to go back over it and then I can keep on if I kind of go up and back and kind of blur that edge I can get like a whole section that's these very light brush strokes and then I can go back in over the top of it later and add well not that not that much paint but um, add highlights and I won't have this line here that I'm having to, to cover. And that's just happens when you press down too hard when you're doing this fur. So, cause you're pressing down, you're offloading that, you're pressing that br that paint down onto the canvas. So with these kind of brushes that are super textured like this, you a really light touch is all you need. All you need is just to barely touch that, skim that tip of the brush against the canvas. And then that will get the that texture to come off for you. You can hear it scratching there. This is actually really nice because there's so little texture on my canvas that these little fine hairs are really showing up nicely on here. If you have a lot of texture on your canvas you may have to use a little bit more paint in your brush or a little bit more fluid paint. You know, add a little bit of extra water to it or something. So the fur kind of goes out here and then in the middle it sort of goes down in the middle of the leg. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the darker kind of medium, maybe this color gray right in here and if you go too light that's fine because we're going to we're going to glaze back over it to, to uh, darken up some of these areas too so I'm going to go ahead and try to get it as close as I can to the color that I want let's go get that black here and add that kind of seam in the arm right there 
but then I'm, I'm going to go back in and glaze and that's just going to be like a very thin layer of paint to um, add texture or add um, darkness to some of these areas where I want my shadows to be. Got a little bit of color right here under the chin. And I'm going to get a little bit of the brighter color. And just do one more layer right here. And really highlight that. And uh, which brush are you using? This is the 3 8 inch blender. Grazie. And then a little bit of right there on the little toes. Cute. Glad we're not playing the drinking game today. I think this is like um, a 10 on the cute scale. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to finish the show. No, exactly. If you had to drink every time I said cute, mm -hmm. it's going to be, yeah. Oh, man, I forgot to get eggnog. Eggnog, there you go. Man. You forgot to get it? Yeah. Courtney, Courtney likes eggnog, too, I think. I think she's the only one else of the family that likes it. That's because she's awesome. <laughs> Only the awesome people like it. No, I'd like it if I could drink it. I can't. Mm. Maybe I wouldn't, though. No, I don't really like <laughs> raw egg flavor. Okay, so going with a little bit darker, the light source is over here. So uh, wherever the light is hitting first, it's going to be lighter, and then it's going to fade to the darker. So this side is on the dark side here, so it's not getting that light. The head is catching that light. Um, it's probably coming from this direction. So um, the the top and the side of the face is going to get all that light. This is going to get the light, and this, this leg is going to get the light here. So when was the last time you had eggnog? Oh my gosh, it's probably been, oh, it's got to be 20 years maybe, easily. Okay, so this this isn't your mama's eggnog. I mean, it doesn't taste like raw eggs. Okay. It's got that nutmeggy, cinnamon-y okay. taste. I, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I... <laughs> But speaking of the holidays, so yes. several weeks ago on one of the shows, I'd said in chat that we were having difficulty finding butterscotch pudding right, for, for our uh, monkey, bread, monkey bread, our traditional monkey bread yes. breakfast as well. Patty came through for us. I can now make, let's see, two... Four, six, <laughs> eight, ten, twelve batches of monkey bread. Nice. I got a box addressed to me. Yeah, to yeah. Me Hello. <laughs> with butterscotch pudding. Who makes the monkey bread? That's what I want to know. Sometimes I do. Okay. <laughs> I know I eat it for sure. <laughs> But I mean, thank I, you, Patty. Yes, again, I'm I'm just simply amazed, honestly, that we have such incredible fans out there that would take time and yeah. have their day and spend their money to do something like that, and then Pretty it's cool. awesome. Pretty cool. I mean, a couple of years ago, I said I wanted a Tesla, and somebody sent me a Tesla. Yeah. So that was nice. That was nice. It was a little bit small, but to fit everybody, but. Well, it says over here on the shelf, still in the package. <laughs> oh, you know what? What? Maybe it's a seed. 
Oh, Maybe I'm supposed hmm, to plant, plant it. Plant it. You didn't know. And it grows into, it, huh? into a full, full size. Okay. Well, you need to try that. <laughs> All right. So, again, start with the darker in tones, you know, somewhere in here. And then just gradually stacking the lighter as I get closer to this edge here. You can always go back in and make it lighter. And then you can all also, you can, we can glaze back over that, these light areas with our darker color later. So if you get it too light, don't, don't worry, you can always fix it. And the nice thing about acrylics is they're pretty easily fixed since they're opaque most of the time, or most of them are opaque. I would say some of them are opaque, I shouldn't say most, depends on what colors you're using, but you can make them opaque by adding a little white pretty easily. So, <clears throat> so adding the lightest color right here, look at how much that's going to really pop that leg out. He's popping that leg out. Sun. And right in here. <laughs> Excuse me. Fits <clears throat> <Yeah. laughs> a bit cool. Fun in the other room. A little bit of a dark area right in here. That's that's the crease of the leg there. baby hairs kind of smaller than the mama. You know, they're not, they're pretty short. They're not super long, so. And you want to add your, your lighter colors in there pretty gradually so that you don't cover up all your black because you really want that black underneath and that's what's going to give it dimension. Okay, so again, starting with this darker grays on this dark side of the face. though if you get the right tool we get some of the lighter white that white is at the top of the ear here bring it down around now if you want the f fuzzy um, part to be sticking out over you're gonna have to do it in this direction because wherever you end your brush stroke is where you're going to have the most fuzz coming out. Where you start it is going to be kind of more solid. So if I want these flyaway um, little fine hairs, then I want to pull from the inside out to create that fuzz along the top of the body there. The ears were kind of smooth, so I didn't worry about it too much over here on this one. A little bit of fuzz coming out, but not much. So the fur around the eyes is kind of where um, everything sort of originates from. So the fur between the eyes is going to be kind of almost straight up and down here. And then it's going to come down this way from the top and up this way and it flows up and around the eyes a little bit so it kind of goes upward and then around and then back around this way so um, well not this is kind of straight here 
real close to the eye. It's pretty close. Just tap in kind of, you're not seeing a lot of direction to that fur there. But then as you get kind of away from the eye, you're starting to see it grow up and around the eye. It's kind of flows up and around them like water almost. fur on the nose is very, very tiny. So just kind of tapping, almost stippling is all you're going to need to do there along the top of that nose and around the sides of the nose. So are we uh, doing a show next Saturday? No. Okay. We are Tuesday, but not Saturday. Yes. Because of the Thanksgiving long weekend. Right. And also my Thursday one is done for this month. So. Oh, yeah. You need to show that. Yeah. I'll show what we painted this month for my $10 patrons. I'm really proud of it. It's really cute. turned out cute. All right, I'm going to get more white here. This is that lightest color. Really kind of should start with the sort of more medium color. Maybe this one here. Use your paper towel to kind of regulate how much paint's on there. So if you get a big glob of it and you smush it through your brush and you still, you know, don't see any texture here and you feel like you've got too much, just kind of dab it on your paper towel. That'll kind of help regulate how much is on there for this and you know once you get kind of a feel for how much paint should be on here you can move pretty quickly with these it, it goes pretty quickly but um, take, I think patience and a light touch is is uh, what you want when you're doing fur okay here I'll show the that was our $10. That was so fun to paint. I loved it. It was so fun. Lots of lots of fun colors and all kinds of really neat stuff in there to dive into. Lots of good like lessons on uh, glazing and stuff to get this rounded candy cane shapes and lines and everything. So and the glazing on the candies too to get the highlights and stuff. So it was really fun. Fun project. I'm glad we did that one for our bonus video. This or not bonus video. That was the ten dollar level challenge image. We call it. I'm glad I didn't do it for the bonus video because it took like six hours. <laughs> uh, it would have been a very long bonus video. <laughs> our bonus videos we do in one setting. The challenge images I use. Um, we do a live stream just for the ten dollar folks once a week, um, and we do it all month long. Usually at least three weeks. Sometimes I take a Thursday off, depending on how challenging the project is. But yeah, it was a fun one. All right, let's go a little bit. These are actually pretty light, so I'm going to go kind of in between these two here. Grab a little bit of these two lighter, medium light ones. I'm just going to fill in so go straight up here and then as I come over the eye it kind of flows this way towards the ear on either side shadow area. I want to use a little bit of the darker color.
use some of the lighter color for the eyebrow areas where it's kind of coming up. That brow bone sticks up and catches the light on either side. There and there. And then a little bit right here on the inside of that eye. Across the... This area is kind of a little bit medium color. But like right here is pretty bright. Keeping my brush strokes very small. See too much paint there, that's what happens when you put too much paint on the brush. It's just got a big blob of paint right there. I'm gonna dab that off before it sets in. There we go. Okay, so this part is a little bit trickier, you know, because there's a lot of small area here for Fur, so this is probably the harder part of the project is kind of around the face, I would say. Again, a little bit of the lighter color right here to do down between the nose. And in front of the eye right here. And then this side of the face is Quite a bit lighter. Let's go ahead and finish filling in the hair. Using a pretty much the lightest color here for the top of the ear. We would be rich if you got paid by the tap. I know. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of tapa tapa. <laughs> <laughs> the old tapa tapa. Mm -hmm. As Chef John would say. Yep. So, which one are you using? I'm using the light, um, the lightest one here mm -hmm. on this light side. Right, but face. what was the white that you used to start with? To titanium. Titanium, tidy whitey. Tidy whitey. Check. Yep. We're bringing back tidy whitey, it's baby. Tight, titanium white and black. That's all we're doing today. Nothing fancy. I wanted to keep it simple for, make it a little bit more beginner friendly. So that's why I decided not to go with the fancier color mixes but you could totally um i think i did um I'm trying to think if on the elephant i used the burnt umber and i think i might have used the burnt umber and ultramarine blue on the elephant the i've done a whole series of mom and babies so i did a llama mama llama mama baby um, in the, it, this, that one was a little bit colorized. It wasn't quite straight black and white. And then we did, um, a giraffe mama and baby that was part of our bonus video couple, uh, last year, I think. Um, and we did the elephant baby and mama. 
and I feel like there's a couple that I'm missing. Well, the horses I thought could probably you could you could you know make one of the horses smaller if you wanted to do the white horses as a mom and baby. You could probably adapt it um, if you wanted to do a whole series of these mom and baby cub you know mom and baby animal paintings like I did. I, it's really fun. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm missing a couple of the paintings we've done, but I can't think of it right off the... right now. The bear? Wasn't huh? a baby though. Did you see... wow. Did you see the bear? But it was. It didn't have a baby with it. No. But you did like a grizzly bear in black and white. Yeah, no. I'm just trying to think of the mom and baby ones. Oh, I've okay. Done. I'm sorry. I'm sure some of the flowers you did were mom and babies. Probably. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> I think you just painted the adult tank and you didn't paint the baby tank. So I see. that wasn't part of it. I need to paint the baby tank now, just to be fair. Yeah. Equal time. Somebody said sheep. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes, I knew I was missing one. Yeah, sheep. So. Speaking of sheep, randomly, I saw a video, a drone video, of a uh, dog herding sheep. Oh, really? Somewhere over in Ireland or somewhere. Scotland, yeah. maybe? Yeah. It was pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Need to look for that. So run back and forth. and The sheep from that height looked very fluid. Fit, they look, they almost looked like a liquid. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah, just because uh, the were way moving. they were moving. Yeah, anyways. Fitz Pickle tries to herd our um, vacuum cleaner that way. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the same thing. Okay. Well, just but I mean, it's similar. <laughs> just saying. He thinks he's a herding dog. <laughs> he tries to herd the cat sometimes. Oh, he does herd the cat for sure. He tries to cut her off. He does. He pushes her around. Yeah. And then she goes and sits in his little play pen area <laughs> and kisses at him when he tries to come in. And drinks his water yeah. and lays in his bed. <laughs> So she gets back. Yeah, she gets it back. She's she's no pushover. Cashmere's been around the block. She's what, fifteen, sixteen now, something like that. She, she knows what's up. Oh yeah, she's dealt with dogs before. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I'm just going back in now that I've got all my areas in and I'm looking at where I'm seeing these highlights and I'm coming back in with this light color and just very lightly, you know, adding this brighter white on top and trying to again make sure that I'm not covering up too much of that black. If I do, it's fine. I can go back in and add more black if I need to, but I'm, you know, save myself a step if I don't, if I, I don't have to do that, so... See how we're doing that. Just adding. Brighter bits. And where the where the lighter meets the darker areas, if if it's you know too obvious, then um, I'm just gonna get I can get that color that's kind of in between. Um, but I'm using a really light touch so that when I'm going over these areas, I start in in the area where I want it to be the brightest, and I do that first, and then as I go out can see how that color will lighten just because that paint's not on my brush as thick anymore. So start where you want that color to be brightest and then blend it out into the areas where you want it to be darker um, or you know where you want that color to, 
to blend out to. So, you know, in here's the brightest area. If I start there, I'm going to get good coverage and then I can just use what's left in my brush to kind of blend out into these areas and make sure I don't have like a solid line of white here against my dark areas anywhere. And just kind of paying attention to the roundness of the forehead here um, to make sure that I'm getting kind of that light area here, rounding out that forehead. There's kind of a dark area right here in front of the ear. On this side, it's not as obvious because this side's all pretty light. So I'm gonna go back in here and just make sure that I have a nice bright white on all of this area of the ear and in front of the ear. Inside the ear there, there's just a little dark area right there. And then in front, there's an area of white that kind of rounds out that face shape right there. And there's a little bit of a dark area right in front of, right around the eye right there. So I'm gonna leave that a little bit darker and get a little bit more of that white and go right up in here. That eyebrow area is pretty bright. And then blend that up into the forehead area a little bit. And just slowly adding more and more white and more and more layers here to create our values. That nose still is not quite bright enough. Okay, then when I get to this point, I'm going to start looking at the reference photo more carefully. And so I can see that this side of the face is too bright, which is fine. We'll just glaze it. Um, but then I can see that this side of the face is too dark. Like all of this should be much brighter. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my bright white now. Just straight up white here. And I can actually, let's go ahead and clean this brush out. And maybe switch to a little bit smaller brush so we have a little bit more control. So I'll get the quarter inch brush here and really start laying in this white. And really in this area, there's not a whole lot of that dark black showing. So I can go in here and now really lay that white in and cover most of the darker areas but still leaving some of the lighter grays showing. So we still have a little bit of a depth there. We still have some color underneath that's going to give us some depth of color, but we don't have the dark black like we do on this side. So I'm going to try to kind of do it until I don't see as much of that dark black. And if I feel like it's, it's like got no depth at all, then I can go back in and add some of the lighter grays again, you know, to, to balance it out. But I'm just going to keep on doing this on this side and just kind of concentrate on this area where I want it to be brighter. It's a little bit thick right there, but I'm just going to tap over it to try to blend that out a little bit. And then also you need to watch for your paints drying. Now we're doing these so thin that they're drying almost as soon as we put them on the canvas. But um, if your if your paint is you know thicker in an area and it's not dry, and then you try to or it's starting to dry, and you try to go over it with new layers, it can get kind of gummy. So just kind of watch for that. If your paint feels sticky or thick in an area and you're trying to lay down paint and it doesn't want to stick and it's kind of leaving a bare spot like it's trying to do right there, then I just need to leave that alone and let it dry a little bit before I try to lay down more paint on it. It's just got too much paint in that area right now that's not, it's kind of like, you know, trying to, I don't know, trying to think of what it would be like. Just lay cake batter or like, 
cake frosting on top of more frosting or something where you know you just at some point it just there's fluid underneath and so that the top layer doesn't have anything to stick to um, I would go for some frosting on frosting <laughs> that sounds good I'm just trying to think of what it does sound good uh, somebody asked why can't you glaze with white like you can with a dark you can it's just that the um the white glazing does better with darker colors because um the white will cloud everything that's underneath so uh unless you use zinc white you could use zinc white so like when i do sun rays and things like that i'll use zinc white um to do sun rays but it clouds everything up with glazing it it deepens your colors and it and it um uh that's and that's why I'm using it for this because it's going to darken up these areas here um, on the side of the face where I need it darker um, really easily. I don't know if I answered that question to their satisfaction. But, but in this case, it would cover too much of the... Um, it would cover too much of the darker areas. It would It would basically just kind of unify this whole thing. We'd lose all of our depth of value in our white areas if we tried to glaze white over them. All right, so we're getting closer to our light white areas. I still need to add some more in some of these areas here. Especially like around the nose, there's a little bright area right there. Also use your finger to kind of blend out too if you get an area that you, your paint's a little thick. He looks mad right here because he's got such a dark area right there. So I want to kind of lighten that up a little bit. It's not that dark. Right there. We got another question for you. Okay. Person said that their paintings usually will have a shiny plastic look unless they use a matte medium okay but they notice that yours don't seem to have that look so how do you are do they that using um what kind of paints are they using i wonder I, I i actually asked that question and i have not seen a response okay. to it so yeah it would depend on the kind of paints they're using but i mean mine do um Mine do have shiny bits, areas in them, if you look at them, you know, in the light just right. Um, I don't know. This one doesn't because of the canvas. Um, but it sounds like you might be using too thick. If you're putting your paint on super thick. I got to answer. The golden heavy body. Okay. It sounds like you're probably just putting your paint all a bit thick. If it's if it's going on glossy like that, then it's probably... the they uh, The golden paints do have a gloss kind of finish to them naturally uh, some colors more than others but um but yeah you're probably just putting them on kind of thick thicker than i am that's why you're seeing that gloss but yeah if you don't like that then yeah use the matte medium that the only thing i don't like about matte medium is that it does dull your colors a little bit too so you because it's got it's basically you're adding white particles to your Paint. That's what it. That's what the matte medium has in it that makes it take down that dull shine because you're trying to disrupt the light from shining through your paints. You know, um, so they put white particles in it to do that. And that, so you know, if I was to paint white matte medium over this, it would dull everything down a little bit. Um, all right. Uh, I feel like I got his little muzzle a little bit wide on this side, so I'm going to go back in with some of the darker, maybe some of this color here. It's not super dark, but it's a little bit darker than what I have here. And just kind of push that back a little bit right there. Narrow that back out. And I'll do it on this side too. That can happen, especially when you're 
doing these fur things, you know, because you're trying to cover your lines or something. And if your line is right on the edge of where your fur is, and when you try to cover it, you're going to go over that line. And so then you kind of lose the, the border that you were trying to create. So just go back in here with the darker gray. I'm going to add some around this eye here with the darker gray. Really, we're going to glaze this, so I don't have to do a whole lot of that. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Um, go ahead and put some of this darker color underneath the nose there. The mouth is pretty much just all in shadow all here. We have another question about okay. glaze okay, or varnish. They wanted to know, does varnishing help unify the painting? Uh, yeah, it can. It can bring all the colors kind of, yeah, the, the, it'll, it'll unify the shine for sure, you know. And it, it will brighten up your colors some if you use a gloss or a, or a um, satin varnish. If you use a matte varnish, it'll kind of dull all of them a little bit but some people like that look I'm not saying that I just don't like it that much myself you know I, that's not a you know I, I want my colors to be bright so I I want I don't want to do that but you know some people really like the look of that matte soft matte um, sheen so it's just a matter of preference there's no right or wrong you know way of doing it and try it out and see what you th you like, you know. Just I didn't like that, so I just took it off there. Okay, so I'm going to let him sit there and dry really well before we try to glaze anything. And I probably will glaze a little bit with the white um, on, the, on this side, just a little bit. But let's go ahead and paint in the eyes. I'm going to use the number one here in my black. Spray all this down. I think we mixed just about the right amount. So our eyes pretty much just solid black. And there's a little bit of, let's go ahead and get like this kind of medium to light gray. There's a little bit of an eyelid right on the bottom here that we're seeing. Let me go a little bit lighter. Right there. And then I'm just going to go right up next to that and fill in around the eye and make sure I've got a good, a good shape for it. Cute. other one. And this one, the highlight's pretty bright, so I'm going to get a little bit of the white here and just kind of do that right along that edge. Right there. And I'm going to use it on this one too. that on pretty thick and then I'm just going to use my brush to push it, pull it out and around. I've got one of my hair 
stray hair sticking out there into my black. Just using the water here just to kind of thin that out and push it around a little bit. Oh, I need a new one round. My brown is messing up. Just find a different one. Do I need to take it out back and straighten it up? Yeah. Well, it's just I probably didn't clean it out properly. Some areas that are sticking out. Um, I guess I'll use a three aught round that's a little bitty, a little bit small, but I think it'll work. I'm gonna get that lightest of the white grays here and start kind of forming the nose. I kind of did around it somewhat, but I, I didn't really, I haven't done a very good job of like finalizing the shape yet. It's doing it too. Look at that. What the heck? It's a good thing I ordered new brushes. bit higher on this side just the way his head's tilted and then there's kind of a dark mouth underneath so I'm just gonna really gray this whole area out when I glaze it just so that that's all kind of blended in and then I really need to round this out a little bit more. I feel like it doesn't have enough roundness. Okay. There we go. angle I'm gonna use a little bit of the let's get this kind of medium ish number two gray <laughs> and put it just on the tip of this brush I'm just gonna kind of highlight the top of the nose just a little bit and get the black and just kind of towards the top there. Okay. Be a little bit more. There we go. Alright, and then a little bit of that light gray right here just on the eyeball so just kind of add a little tiny very subtle little tiny bit of highlight there let's do the mama claws here with this brush 
and get kind of the dark to medium black hair. Really dark on some of these. Mainly trying to cover up my lines here. And then get my, let's get this light highlight color here. I'm just mixing it with that black so it's kind of ended up being kind of close to that color there. I might want it a little bit lighter. Okay. And then I'm going to find the kind of middle of the right side here and just kind of go mm, maybe too much paint there. stay pretty. There we go. Pretty subtle. Just kind of lightly and it's kind of just the area that's rounded um, closest to us that's catching the light. So it's not the whole thing. And then I can grab that black and while that's still wet, I can kind of press it around the sides here and kind of blend that in a little bit. Okay. There's our little mama claws. You definitely don't want to get close to those. Sides it with the black. Not all catching as much light, you know, so some of them are kind of in the shadow. These two are kind of more on the shadowed area. Actually, all three of these. this well no let's go ahead and keep the quarter inch because it kind of small little areas around the toes so I'm gonna just blend in my dark or my bright highlights around my toes I've already got a little color there so I'm not gonna have to do a whole lot just add a little extra texture I might go a little bit darker with this the lighter color on this one. And I'm trying to kind of round out the top. 
tops of these a little bit. They're kind of rounded slightly. Shaggy toes. I'm going to need a bigger brush for this area in here. These are just larger. The trick to these kind of things is that just to paint what you're seeing, you know, just trust what you're seeing because um, you're like, this doesn't look like a toe to me, you know, so like my brain is going, don't, you know, you need to fix that and make it look more like a toe. Well, you know, it's not, I'm just painting what it looks like in the picture. So it really does look kind of like a big weird blob there. Um, and just go with it you know uh, like if you look at it from a distance sometimes if you get like right close up to something too you can you know be hard to kind of see the overall picture so every now and then step back and kind of look at it from a distance and kind of um, realize okay yeah that really does look like that look at the reference photo and you know look at yours and I'm you know, sure some, somebody said that about my toe before that what just so weird wow. round blob look, look at that weird round blob mm -hmm. probably the lady giving you a pedicure that one time that we went together yeah yeah that one time yeah i don't think i've been allowed back <laughs> <laughs> you haven't asked <laughs> okay so there's that one let's do this side over here a little bit darker Again, so I'm just gonna kind of and going over those little claws a little bit too will kind of help seat them in the foot so that they don't look like they're just kind of floating in front of things. So I'm gonna deliberately kind of going over them a little bit with my color. Get a little bit of the lighter color here. It's nice to have a chair that doesn't creak. It is nice, yeah. <laughs> That's distracting for me, too. How do you, Daddy, you like it? Comfy. Yeah, so far so good. I'm sure have I'll to be get playing with adjustments. On. I'm gonna try it out on Thursdays and see if I like it. See if I need to get one. Let's 
get the bigger, larger, three eighths inch. Actually, let's go ahead and get this one. This is the three eighths inch Willow's blend, or the three eighths inch Deerfoot stippler. Um, I don't know why I grabbed white. I really don't need white. I'll get the gray and make kind of a lightish light gray somewhere in here. And I'm going to use the tip of the brush. So I've got it loaded th fairly thick with paint, but it's not globbed. Um, the, br the bristles tight. You can still see, you know, how those bristles are sticking out. That's how I want it. And I'm just going to very lightly hold it really l far out on the tip. And just drag it so that just the tip of the bristles are hitting there. We've got a question. Yeah. The person said they try to paint what they see. But then their brain and hand paint something different. Yeah. Is that normal for artists? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you can try turning your stuff upside down, looking at it in a mirror instead of looking at it straight on. Um, there's also there's a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain that actually trains your brain to ignore those signals so that you actually do start drawing what you're seeing but like doing things like blind contour drawing where you're um, not allowed to actually look at your paper you just have to draw like as much detail as you can without lifting the pen off the paper and not not looking at anything but your what you're drawing and that really helps you train it what it one it helps you focus so it helps you really start to look at okay what is in here there's a little line here and there's a line here and there's a line here in your knuckles and you know look at this outline of your the shape instead of um looking at it as a whole finger look at the um this just this part and only focus on this part and draw that and then see where this and this you know what is next to it and where does it line up with the next finger and draw this shape in you know this little v-shape here and try to get this angle right and you can hold your brush you know and and use it to kind of help you angle before you go down to draw and there's all kinds of little tricks that you can do um you know to kind of help you uh, get better at doing that you know but it is it is a struggle and I still struggle with it sometimes you know there's certain things that you know it's just harder for me to see properly so and the more you the more you are familiar with the subject um, or you know the more you've done it the the easier it will be to kind of do it from memory but then also um, sometimes it's harder to get out of the rut of knowing you know what you know it should look like kind of thing you know so there's a catch-22 there a lot of times the most common things like clouds and trees and um you know fruit and things can be some of the harder things for people because they already feel like they should you know their brain already kind of has stored what they think it should look like and they they have a hard time overcoming that because of it That's why gridding um, helps so much because it really forces you to just look at the image one square at a time. And, um, and that can be a really good way of kind of starting to train your brain to... I, I wouldn't recommend staying in that, though, you know, forever. I, I don't know. I mean, it, if you want it super accurate, yes. So, you know, there's just... But... Look at how cute he is. Mama, I love how the mamas stand over them like that. When I was looking at pictures of baby noses, because I was thinking I was going to kind of define the nose a little bit better, and I was looking at pictures of mom, baby polar bears, and the, the moms do stand like this quite often, right right over the top of them. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you want something? <laughs> Try, it. Try it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he's my baby. So cute. I can't say it right. Bebe. Bebe. That's from our favorite show, Moira. Moira Rose. I won't say the name of the show because. <laughs> 
Some kind of a creek. S S C H I T T S down there. Yeah, some kind of a creek. Mm-hmm. You need a paddle. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best show. I'm really sad that it's ended. Sad it ended. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to get some of the brighter now. So I did kind of the medium-ish colors, and I'm just going to go back in here where I see the brightest. And again, put the brightest where the bright spot is. And then as I kind of move out, I can sort of... I'm not reloading. I'm just going to kind of use up what's left in my brush here to kind of blend this out into the rest of the fur. Okay. This brush didn't do too bad here for this. I like it. I think I did a pretty good job. So the, the book that you mentioned there is, we have a link to it in your Amazon store, link below yes. this video. Yeah. And it by default shows up as a Kindle digital uh -huh. load, but you can select either the digital version, a hardback, or a paperback version of it. Right. So right. if you like to have it in your hands and do that, then you can order it that way. Yeah, and the nice thing about that book, um, we used it in college, and it's got all these different tricks and techniques for training your brain to kind of overcome the preconceived notions it has of what things should look like, you know, versus what you're actually seeing. It trains you to paint what you're seeing or draw what you're seeing, not what you think it should be. And that's, you know, if you're doing realistic art, that's important. If you, you know, if you're just doing it for fun and you don't care, then, you know, what it, if you want it to be kind of stylized in your own style, then you, you know, you may not want to do that. But although I would just say, you know, learning to draw will, will help your painting skills because it helps you see things. That's the, that's the thing about it. It, uh, it's not just about the physical act of drawing. It's about seeing things accurately so and i learned to draw a stick man from from drawing from the, your backside what so it's a different book <laughs> okay. i think it's out of publication i'm not gonna touch that at all i'm not even gonna what you're try to gonna, understand what you meant by that you're not gonna touch it <laughs> okay <laughs> moving on going to black here and this is where the glaze comes in hopefully it's still there <laughs> and I'm not going to get my white because my white will cloud this black so all I need to do to get this black lighter is to add more glaze so I can have you know a really thin glaze over here and then a little thicker glaze over here just by adding more of that glaze and, and um this glaze is uh, the golden glazing liquid, and it has an extender in it. If you don't use uh, an extender with it, it will dry almost immediately. So I would say I wouldn't use any other brand. I'm not Golden's not paying me to say that. Um, I wish they were, but um, <laughs> uh, but they it's just the best you know that I've found that for glazing. So all right. I'm going to start in my darkest areas here. I'm going to get kind of some of this dark area here, dark glaze, and start right up next to the face. And you can see I'm kind of putting putting it on in the same way that I did the fur somewhat so that it's kind of following those lines. So that if I do have any imperfections in it or if any any streaks show, it'll kind of look like it's part of that design so really darkening up this side of the face around this eye in front of the eye a little bit right there and then down the nose right here this whole area right here 
And the, the idea is not to cover all of my white up. I want it to be transparent so that I can still see that texture of that all that work that we just did. We don't want to cover it all up. So go thin on these glazes. You can use water if you don't have glazing medium. That's fine. Um, just know that you know if you're using heavy body acrylics, they uh, the the layers um, can can lift if you um, go back over your layer with another color um, because. Uh, the water will kind of underbind that the binding in the paint and there's not as much binder in heavy body acrylics so it can it can weaken the bond with the canvas not on the under layers but just on the glazing layer if you're you know whatever layer you're using that you've had a lot of white you know using a lot of water I mean not white um okay I don't know if that made sense but Alright, so I'm going to use pretty dark here, almost black, but it's just a little bit of glaze. I'm going to start up here where I want it pretty dark between the legs. And actually, I can see a little area here that I missed that was... dip all these brushes back in my water so that they stay moist because I haven't cleaned them out yet and they're they definitely have paint in them okay so going back in here now with this glaze and I'm going right up over you can see especially in these light areas honey you're way too close I can't zoom out zoom out please Thank you. I was listening to the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so going around here, I'm just being careful not to get this on any places that I don't want it to be, but I can turn my brush so that it's at an angle here on some of these areas and add a little bit of glaze into some of these middle areas too if I want to add a little bit of that black back in add a few little areas of dark back in okay but you see how it's kind of rounded out that whole area there I'm going to take really kind of let's do it along here this is where I was saying if you use a black canvas or you know that's got black gesso this all of this area here because this is kind of a glossy glaze here all of this gloss area will dry glossy and it'll show up as a different color than your gesso so Start out with it painted. Even you can start out with a gessoed canvas, but just still paint it black. Even it'll it's not gonna hurt anything to paint black on a black gessoed canvas. Or you could paint it back black at the end here, you know, when we're at this point you can in and paint certain areas black around the sides. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit more glaze here. I'm going to do a little bit right here. Wipe that off. Just push that around while it's wet. And again, tapping in the direction of the hair growth so that it kind of mimics the 
layers we've already got. glaze do in between the paws here and then do this leg a little bit back Using my finger to kind of blend that out can help too. Kind of blends out any rough or hard edges that I don't want. Is that why you're always poking me? What? Is that why you're always poking me? To rough, round out the edges? Yeah, the, <laughs> the edges you don't want. The hard edges. Yeah. subtle and through here so just kind of going slow kind of from this corner out there's like a little area right under the eye right there and same thing here So can you go over what is the purpose for glazing? Um, well, it's just toning toning the canvas, really. I'm just um, adjusting all of these areas that, you know, maybe I got this area like in the middle here too bright, so I need a little bit of this darker color in here. And it does a little transparent layer so that I'm not covering up all of what I've already painted. I'm just kind of toning it to a different um, value so I'm darkening it up or changing if I was using color I would be changing the color just slightly you know so maybe I wanted a blue tint to this polar bear or you know more yellow or brown tints in certain areas and I could use a you know a blue or a brown or gray um, you know just different color on my um, at this point you know anything goes with this because we've got black and white so we could go in with glaze and we could um, put it you know make our polar bear pink if we wanted to by glazing in some uh, transparent red over the top of this white and uh, we'd make a beautiful you know um, you can't get the look of this any other way than glazing so this kind of very soft subtle color changes um it, it it's the only way i've found to do it is by glazing it's just a and it, it takes your painting from being good to amazing you know it 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 really is one of those techniques that puts it up into the next level of of uh, of detail and Makes it really look professional. Going in here and just separating out these toes. Darkening up 
this area. So you know, any of these areas where I got you know, too much of the lighter color, I can go back in now with this glaze and just darken them up. You can hear this needs to be darker. This whole area needs to be darker. It kind of just unifies it too, you know, it 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 softens these transitions between these colors or these, you know, values so that you have a more natural transition between your light and dark areas. a little bit more subtle. These are all pretty dark in through here, so I'm gonna go in with my almost black. Make sure I've got a good dark separation between my toes and my nails here. Go back in one more layer of white here on my brightest areas. This is where I could, I'll show you what the glazing with the white looks like here. It's, it's going to be more of a solid. This white is, is titanium white. If I used zinc white, it would be less obvious, but um, go ahead and use it in here. It's gonna fill in the. It's gonna fill in the. All of my dark areas. So I'm gonna lose my values that I've got in here, pretty quickly. So I just have to be careful where I'm using it. I only want to use it in areas where I do want it to be look a little bit more solid. Like I heard you say done. Yeah, he's like I heard her say done, and um, okay, mom, I'm here. Did you say something about red? I was just saying that if you wanted to make your, you know, make it a color, then you could tie, you could um, use red or you um, know blue or whatever, you and could do you with could the cheetah. Gl uh, just glaze uh, your color at this point, and you you know you change it completely. But you've got all these values in here. You've got all these darks and lights already built up. So, you know, just by putting a color on, then you would, um, you know, change the whole look of it completely. I mean, it's like, was I supposed to add red? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But like I said, you did that with the leopard or cheetah, or whatever. Right? You yeah, we added. got it done, and then we added it was black the and color. White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it went pow. Yeah. Wowza! I haven't heard that word in a while. Wowza! Wowza! When were you born? <laughs> None of your beeswax. Right. Reminds me of that. What is that? The bachelor and the bobby socks are, and he's like, you know, man, man, hoodoo, hoodoo. That whole, remember that? The, Who do? You do. Do what? No, man. What man? <laughs> man with power. What power? The power of hoodoo. Hoodoo? You do. Do what? <laughs> we kid ourselves. 
That's a great movie. <laughs> Cary Grant. It's hilarious. He reminds me of like George Clooney of our day, you know? He was kind of that kind of yeah. too handsome for his own good, but played really good comedy, you know? <laughs> Excuse me? Didn't take himself too seriously. What are you saying over there? Nothing. Did I say? What? You know he copied me, right? What? Who did? He's got a big fuzzy beard now, too. Oh, George Clooney does? Mm-hmm. Interesting. I don't want to see any Google searches on it either. Mark had somebody in the grocery store concerned about him this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he must look a little elderly with his beard so gray right now. He's got an over-the-top gray beard. It's pretty funny. He said, he's like, this lady came up to me like right as I was leaving, checking out. I must have looked confused because she was like, Can, do you need help, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there waiting for the Walmart pay to finish doing his thing, so I'm just kind of staring at the at the thing doing nothing, and I think that's when she saw me, and she was wondering if she could come help me. Did he forget where his car is? <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, well. And don't take wildlife advice from our friend Dave. Why? Well, according to Dave, the mama bear is totally fine with you going up and petting the baby. Really? Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. Nice. Yeah. She'll probably give you like a big hit, big hug or something. Big hug. Sure. Yeah. Right. You're like, isn't he cute? Come see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got that little bit too bright right there. So I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of the darker. Shade that out a little bit. I think we're just about done. I feel like his eyes are a little bit small. Let me get some black hair with my liner. Give him some some kind of dark coming out give them a little not really eyelashes but sort of just kind of pull some of those hairs up kind of blur that top edge there a little bit there we go oh he's so cute that are dying out there. Just like that meme. Yeah, he got fixed this week and he has been the saddest puppy. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. <laughs> He's just so sad. He's just laying on me all day. What happened? I know. Feels so good. <laughs> Poor guy. Alright, getting a little bit of the lighter. I'm just realizing that this ear is not quite bright enough. These are very small edits that I'm making now. Just kind of, you know, at the at the end of the painting, what I usually do is kind of set it up somewhere where I can look at it. But of course I can't do that while you guys are watching, so I kind of have to try to, you know, look at it as objectively as I can um, in the moment but um, ideally I would set it up somewhere where I could look at it for a couple days and uh, bring up his cheek a little bit it's more rounded right here and you know see if there's any changes that I need to make so when you're doing yours you know just kind of take your time you don't have to set it you know finish it on one setting uh, very rarely would I do that in 
you know, a normal situation. Very, very rarely. But we're not normal. No. Well, doing it live, you just kind of have to, you know, I get it as close as I can, but, you know, there's always going to be things that I'll see later that I probably would have done differently. But, you know, you guys will have the benefit of that. I always get a little slightly miffed, but not really, but kind of slightly when I see people that have done mine and then they've done a whole lot better with it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I could have, I wish I'd done that. Oh, well. Too late. All right, I'm going to go back through and I'm gonna glaze a little bit of a white highlight on my... Just a few of these. Really make those claws kind of come to life there. I think it's this. I think it's this. Um, I'm seeing it now, right here, and the just the expression. Just rounding out this with a little bit more black right here. I think that'll help. Kind of round out that eye and make it look a little softer. Okay. I'm going to stop. There we go. There we have our mama and baby polar bear. Two hours. Not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, Very nice. Yeah, I don't Very enjoyable. see anything. I'm sure I, I, I can find things to change, but like I said, uh, for now, it oh. is what it is for now. Yeah. I might dark, darken up this yeah. area. Yeah, none of us were fooled by you. Zero people. Zero people thought I was done. Well, maybe somebody watching you for the very first time <laughs> thought, oh, well, she said she's done, so that means she's done. <laughs> well, oh, if they're oh. if they're new, Con hopefully they'll uh, subscribe. Mon frère. Subscribe, come back. We It's always an adventure because we paint these live, so you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't. <laughs> It's like I, a box hope, of chocolates. I hope for the best and try to prepare as much as I can ahead of time in my head. But it always, you know, you never know what you get into painting, how it's going to go exactly. Each painting is its own kind of little process. That's the fun of it. Okay, that's better. Like really a little bit more dramatic there. Get some drama going. There we go. Oh, and like right here, I don't have this dark area around the side of his eye right there. There we go. Putting a little bit of it on, stepping back, looking at it. Well, not really stepping back, but I'm looking at the monitor, which is nice because it gives me that distant perspective so I can see it kind of removed a little bit. Just put a little bit of the light highlight around the bottom of his mouth, defining that a little bit. All right, I'm for sure going to stop. I'm done. I can't get my little 
we are round. Place your bets, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the odds are at two to one. <laughs> Actually, one to two. You're going to lose money on this one. <laughs> but she's done. I'll show you. Just for that, I won't do anything, even if I see it. <laughs> So to remind everybody here, live and in, in, towards the end of November 2020, coming up in December 2020, yeah. the first 12 days, we're doing a 12 days of Christmas giveaway, something each day for the first 12 days. And then on Sunday, the 13th of December, we're going to have a Patreon uh, bingo event. Yes. More details to come on that, on right. where to get your cards and all that stuff. So yeah. be Don't worry, we'll be that. sure you get your cards beforehand. Yeah. And then after the bingo, it's the monthly ten or $5 Patreon bonus video, also on the 13th. So it's going to be right. a full day. Yes. Full paint party, Christmas paint party day. Yeah. And as always, to remind everybody that Patreon is a calendar month service. So you get billed on the first of the month each month. So pay attention to your calendar when you sign up just in case. Right. Yeah. So if you sign up now, it'll be just for November. And then you'll get right. charged again on December 1st. So just know that if you don't want that to happen, then wait till December 1st to sign up. Uh, what is she doing? Is she painting more? What? <sighs> no. What? I saw. I, I, I'm watching it right here. No. Your signature. Ah, oh, dang it. I, did, I, did, I couldn't help it. All right, fine. You win. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We've got paints from Golden. We've got Arteza's going to donate some stuff. Princeton has donated a ton of stuff from Princeton, Strathmore, My Mary Art. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And De La Roni paints. So all of those are Princeton affiliates. Uh, and then Fredericks is also donating three sets of canvases. So and these canvases that we're using today. Um, so that'll be, like Mark said, first through the 12th. And we're doing one a day. We are going to pound, just get, you know, you, you sign up that day. The next day the winner is announced. And sign up that day. The next day the winner is announced. So hopefully, um, you know, if you see something that you want to win, come back every day. It'll be on our YouTube channel on the community tab. So uh, we don't use it that often. So we're trying to get more activity on there. And uh, so this will be kind of how we're going to do the giveaway so that it makes it a little bit easier for us to keep track of everything. Oh. We had a last minute Yay. Uh, super chat. And it's from Kristen. There's no special message, but thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate it. And yeah, um, maybe part of the, one of the winning giveaways, maybe like the grand prize would be a, a four-pack of toilet paper. <laughs> because I was at the uh, local Walmart today, and the aisle of toilet paper is gone, gone again? again. Oh, my gosh. They had really? it filled with Christmas candy, and I was gonna, I'm trying to figure out what, <laughs> what exactly does Walmart expect me to do with this. So, I'm just gonna wipe it. your butt with Christmas candy. <laughs> when it's, I don't know. Not that sounds. Sure. That's, that's, that doesn't sound sanitary yeah, to me. I don't know. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, round it out. His and there's there. number two. Oh, stop! Stop! Just. <laughs> I'm gonna do are, what I want to do. So are, don't even. Are you telling me to just stop? Just don't look over here. Just, just don't. Okay. Here, I'm gonna go like this. Like you did on tests, you know, like this. You can't see me. No. So again, the Patreon two dollar level is traceable. Five dollars traceable in the bonus video. Ten dollars is all that plus an additional uh, challenge video that's done over. Did you look month? at my nail color? You know yes, I it was uh, heart and coal. Heart and coal. So yeah, it's a Christmassy. Yeah. It's got like glitter in it. It's pretty awesome. Call me OPI. They. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. We just sponsor. Maybe they'll do a giveaway. Oh yeah, your new your new shirt. The, we can oh, order if you yeah. want to. We did. I ordered one of those too, Th so that, that a, should be coming in soon. There's a cute post on Facebook from Brandon. So yeah, thank you Brandon very much. worked hard on that video. That yeah, he did. 
he spliced in the music from the song yeah. and just just short enough that, that we don't get trouble with, with the copyright mm-hmm. so <laughs> we hope yeah we hope <laughs> anyhow yeah so it'll be fun i'm looking forward to it. it's going to be a fun december so we've got one more video left in no in november we got the coffee mug um that we'll be doing on tuesday and then the very next day so we'll we'll talk more about the giveaway we'll know more exactly what's going on then but um thankfulart.com you can sign up for my newsletter and get a free video and a color sheet um there and we're also going to have a free gift coming out in december for on the newsletter too so just a buying guide coming out hopefully either this week or next um that has uh, well i I, I say that I'm going to do it. It might not happen if I don't have time. So I've got a lot to do with this giveaway, but I'm trying to get it together. So if I get it together in time, don't quote me on this. I'll try <laughs> hopefully have a bonus uh, buying guide that has you know some stuff in it, some links and things for some of the stuff that I use in my videos to make it easy to know what to shop for for Christmas. All right, um, that's it, I guess. Let's get out of here, and we'll. Uh, we just added 15 minutes just talking <laughs> about other That's stuff. <laughs> so I'm Good finishing up, and yeah, we'll be back to the day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you have fun with your families next. Oh no, I guess we got one more week. Okay, yeah, never mind. But no. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. Oh. Thanksgiving's on Thursday. Oh, I was thinking the next day. Okay, yeah. So yes. All right. I'm. I totally lost the whole week of this month. <laughs> <laughs> Check. Tuesday, and then the next Tuesday following that, it'll be just December 1st. So we'll be starting the giveaway. Yeah. All right. I know where I'm at. What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Please subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Share our videos with your friends. Uh, it helps people know what we're doing. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.